I've done something unique this year. There'll be a monitor that'll flash from time to time. So as you can see, I'm a little bit excited right now. <laughs> so throughout the presentation, hopefully we can get that down uh, or we can get it up and we can have a medical emergency. Um, because medical emergencies are always fun. Um, <laughs> for someone, I mean, people need to be employed at this point. You see, technology is unique. Technology has the power to generate phenomenality, the power to generate what can appear as real through perception. The work is changing. I'm not gonna go into the robots are taking our jobs, but let's be honest. If you're spending 20 quid on something to pet the cat, you've got bigger problems than robotics. Now, I'm not gonna feed into some type of hyperbolic frenzy that we're gonna lose our jobs to robots, but it certainly looks like it. Work has changed. I mean, if I go back and look at uh, what I did in the 80s and the 90s, it was, it was on a form, right? You know, it's like strapping turbo rockets to a horse. You know, why you would put a form on a computer is ridiculous. Let's be social, let's be social. So let's put activity streams in our stuff. And, you know, I don't know. And you didn't, then you follow the washing machine or the printer and suddenly that makes sense. Like, you're not gonna follow the printer. The first thing you're gonna unfriend is the printer after your mother. When you're at home and you're on Facebook, you've got things like Cred and Peer Index and Credly measuring you real time. So post lots of pictures of your kids. That helps your score. But then you've got this creepy middle area where you come to a conference and you meet someone and you swap cards and then suddenly they're rating you on LinkedIn. Your ability to be employed in the next three years has been outsourced to cats, coworkers that hate you and someone you casually met while drunk. <laughs> Anybody heard of 23andMe, the DNA sequencing site where you can share your genes with other people? I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'd like to talk about my doctor. This is not him. It's just a stock photo of a doctor. But then I got smart. I asked for all my medical records four years ago, scanned every single one, and then when I was sitting there telling me what's wrong with me, I look up and go, well, actually, in 2003, I had a very similar situation, and you gave me this. And he just loses his mind, like, <laughs> why do you come see me? Because well, you still have the prescription pad, you know? <laughs> with parental controls. That's the funny thing. Parental controls were there. I don't go into that one. Um, it's just the idea of parental controls is so silly. Um, if you want parental controls, use birth control. That's about as close you can get to controlling your children. Okay? But I love this quote here. People are not machines, but in every situation where they're given a choice, they will behave like machines. It's interesting things you learn when you can see your life this way. I found out there were certain television shows that made me eat really horribly. I found out that just by putting a sensor between the refrigerator and the toilet, how late I could have a drink so I didn't get up in the middle of the night, because if you're male, I'm 40, you know this happens. You know, I love what some of the things we're doing up here, assistive clothing. So instead of having a phone with GPS, you have haptic shoes. So you tell the phone where you want to go and the shoes know, turn left, turn right, because they vibrate. Although, if I could have shoes that would walk for me, I would walk like this. <laughs> What's amazing about these two technologies are not the technologies. It's what they're going to do to the world around us in the next three years. I want to be on the stage in three years and say, do you remember when I told you this? Because here, I see Disney rides that react based on what your experience was like in the park up to that point. Movies get edited in real time. Bunch of people see it opening weekend. Some parts we thought were good. They didn't end up being so good. We edit the movie. We get to a point where movies are changed in real time depending on where you live in the world. You actually use the data for yourself and you make your world better. You live in assisted reality and you head toward an adaptive reality. For me, I don't believe in futurists. I don't believe in skeptics or rationalists. I have no time for zealots or kings. I found, though, that I do share a plane of existence at the data level with my dog, with my home that I share with my partner, Doug, and Romo. We all share a plane of existence. And I believe that it's this point in our humanity where we have to come to terms with our relationship, not with each other, but with everything.